Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to a new video. In this video, we are going to worry about our N to M relationship. So that is actually the last relationship that is missing. So between our, uh, our students table and our subjects table, each student is student of multiple subjects and each subject um, has multiple students who actually joined that subject. So we will again start to create a table, an entity here, which is our subject table in our entities package, new Kotlin class. And we call that subject, select class and make that a data class. Then we want to give this a single attribute here, which is the subject name of type string. And that will also be the primary key of that table and we set auto generate to false as usual and we also want to annotate this with at entity of course so that is nothing new for you but what we now want to do is we want to make the relationship between our subject and our student table actually its own table so if you remember from the first video of this playlist what we actually need to do for n to m relationships is we need to make the relation its own table and that table contains the primary key of each table it connects basically. So we will do this in our relations package here. Right click new Kotlin class and we will call this student subject cross reference. So that's just how Google calls it in their documentation and I'll just go with it here and select class here. So this again will be a data class here and it will contain on the one hand a val student name so just the primary key of the student table and also the primary key of the subject table so our subject name and in this relationship table here because this is such a relationship table none of these two are actually primary keys so we don't have a real primary key here because this is the primary key of our student table and this is the primary key of our subject table. But we somehow need to tell Room that this is actually an entity that describes a relation between two tables. So we again need to make this an entity here and we didn't need to do this for the other types of relations we defined here. We will still do something like this in this video but what we actually do here with this cross reference is something different because that is its own table in our database that we need to populate with data. So when we insert a new student and a new subject into the table, we also need to insert an entry into this table here that just contains the student name. So student Peter visits the subject math, student Peter visits subject German, student Peter and so on, yeah, you, you get it. And to just tell Room that these two tables here are actually connected, we define the primary keys here in the entity annotation. So as a list of string, we just define student name and subject name. And that is it for this table here. And now, as I already said, we need the same as we did with our school with students here for our subject table and for our student table because you can see this table's purpose here is to just get a single school and just get all the students that go to that school and we now need that for each side of our relationship because we on the one hand want to be able to query um let's go back here to query a specific student and get all subjects that student actually visits and on the other hand we also want to be able to query a specific subject and get all students that belong to that subject so that's why we need two more classes in our relations package on the one hand student with subjects and that is a class and that again won't be an entity here so exactly the same as this class here. This also wasn't an entity. This wasn't its own table. But we can open this class here and we will again have an embedded annotation here. We will annotate again the first table name here. So this time we, we pass our student 
which is of type student. And then we again define a relation here with the primary key or is it parent key I think, parent column, which is student name here. We have our foreign column, so I think it's called entity column, which refers to the primary key of our subject table, so subject name. And because this here is actually, this relation is involved in a relation that contains its own table in, a, in an end to m relation here, we also need to tell room which table actually specifies that relation. So in our case, that is this student subject cross-reference table. Because room, of course, needs to know in which table it can actually find the connections to, to join these two tables and to find all the subjects that belong to the student. And we do this with associate by. And here we need to define such a, such a junction. So that just defines the table in which our two our two tables, uh, student and subject, are actually joined together. So that is in our case student subject cross reference, double colon class. And then we give this a name of or a val subjects, and that is a list of subject. Like this. And that is it for this class. So as I said now, this helper class here helps us to query single students and get all the subjects that these students visit. Now we want to define such a class again to have an embedded subject here so that we get all students who visit a subject. So new Kotlin class subject with students. Data class and we can actually just copy the contents here of this student with subjects table. It's not a table, it's a class. And just paste it here. We rename this to subject with students. This is not a student, this is a, is a subject here. The parent column is subject name. And the entity column is now the student name. The junction stays the same. And this list will now be a list of students. And that is it for this class. So that's how you can actually model end to m relationships in Room. In the next and last video of this playlist, we will then create our actual database and also try, try it out. We will see here in this new database inspector of Android Studio how our database actually looks like. So that just makes it very comfortable for us here to not need to show that in a text view or recycler view or something like that. So if you enjoyed this video, then please leave me a like and comment below. And also, of course, make sure to subscribe to my channel for Android videos every second day. And if you're looking for more advanced Android courses, then check out the first link in this video's description, where you will get to my website, pl-coding.com. And there you will find premium Android courses that just help you to bring your Android skills to the next level. And with the discount code philip 15 you will get 15% off of all courses. I wish you a very awesome day. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.